Deontay Wilder says, boxing dies without the excitement of an American heavyweight champion. Hmm. What do you guys think about this? He also said here, one of the things about boxing that I've proved is that boxing thrives off excitement, but the excitement of an American champion, once that dies, so does boxing. I was living proof because I'm coming back on popular demand because that's all I've been hearing from high and low, from homeless people all the way up to millionaires. He said that an American heavyweight brings excitement to the division, then all the money flows. Trust me on that. Now, Deontay, of course, is famous for talking an astronomical amount of rubbish. But on this particular occasion, he may have half a point. I think that American boxing, and I'm going to say American boxing, not necessarily world boxing now because the world has changed. Other markets outside of America have become much stronger, such as the UK. And so having an American heavyweight champion isn't as important today as it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Is it still important though? Yes. I think that, well, I mean, I know America's still a very big boxing market. And therefore, if you have a big man at the top at the helm, then it helps everybody else. And that's the same pretty much anywhere in the world. Anthony Joshua has done absolute wonders for British boxing with him at the top as heavyweight champion for the time that he was. Fantastic. Derek Chisora has talked about this, that when AJ was champion, everybody starts getting paid more because you're fighting on AJ undercards and it just creates excitement and the public's all talking about it. So same effect in the United States if you've got a champion over there. But as I say, the boxing world is bigger now than it was back in the days because back in the days it was really centered on America. Nowadays, America's still a major player, but it's not as big a deal as it was back in the 90s, 80s, and so on. So I would say Deontay Wilder's got half a point. And with regards to the money, he said when, the, when there's an American, and also I should just back up a little bit and say, it's not just enough to have an American heavyweight champion. You need to have an exciting American heavyweight champion. Because Larry Holmes was heavyweight champion in the 80s and the heavyweight division really wasn't seen as particularly glamorous or exciting under Larry Holmes. Part of that was because he came after Muhammad Ali and that's a really tough act to follow because people wanted a heavyweight champion who was charismatic, who was funny, who could hold the attention of a room, who was just a compelling character. And while Larry Holmes was a great fighter, he wasn't the compelling character that Muhammad Ali was. And he, he did suffer because of that. Uh, because, you know, you look at Larry Holmes' career, he was a great champion. But he also didn't have the competition that Ali had. Yes, he fought Ken Norton towards the end of Norton's career. But Larry Holmes didn't have the George Foremans and the Joe Frazier's and the Sonny Lister. He didn't have those guys to fight during his era. So he suffered from that as well. So, uh, yeah. And Larry Holmes, he was a good heavyweight champion. He wasn't the most, ex he was in a lot of good fights. Yes. But there are many other Larry Holmes fights that weren't that compelling to watch where he would just use his jab and use his jab and just outbox guys. It wasn't always particularly thrilling, you know, when Larry Holmes was fighting. Whereas with Mike Tyson, who followed Larry Holmes, I mean, you had a brief, little period of Michael Spinks, right? But really it was Mike Tyson that followed Larry Holmes in the 1980s and he was tremendously exciting. And that's why the, you know, the heavyweight division just lit up again when Tyson came along because of how explosive he was in the ring. This wasn't like a Larry Holmes where many other fights are going, you know, 15 rounds and all this kind of stuff and guys utilizing his jab and old manning people out of the fight. No, no, no. Mike Tyson was coming in there to take heads off. <laughs> you know, so it was very refreshing for the public to see a heavyweight come in like that. So with, again, Deontay Wilder's point, yeah, it helps to have an American heavyweight champion, but you really need an exciting American heavyweight champion 
to bring the money in. I mean, you compare the money that Mike Tyson was making to the money that Larry Holmes was making, it's night and day. And that's because Mike Tyson was more exciting. Now, Deontay Wilder, of course, is very exciting. As much as I've criticized the stuff that Deontay Wilder has said, because he's talked just unbelievable amounts of nonsense, as long as he's been a professional, and particularly when he was champion, that the amount of nonsense that came out of this guy's mouth was just beyond belief. But having said all that, I've always liked Deontay Wilder, the fighter. Even though he's technically flawed and he looks very unorthodox and ungainly at times, that right hand is tremendous. And Deontay Wilder fights with intense passion. He is a very, very intense individual. And you, know, you notice that, you can sense that when he's in the ring, that he's very, very intense. And this is exciting to watch. It's compelling viewing. So I'm glad that Deontay's coming back. I'm not one of these people who is so upset and so annoyed by the rubbish that this guy has spoken that I don't ever want to see him return to boxing. No, I want to see him return to boxing. You know, I don't think that, I, well, at least I hope that we'll never see this situation again where Deontay is holding a belt hostage <laughs> and he's, uh, you know, not fighting people that he should be fighting. I can't envision something like that happening again, particularly at Deontay's age. So I think we can instead see Deontay as some real good matchups. I hope he fights Andy Ruiz, for example. I think that's a great fight. I certainly don't want to see another Luis Ortiz fight, but I'd like to see him in there against Andy Ruiz. I'd like to see him fight. Uh, God, what's the Cuban guy's name? <laughs> can't believe I, I, it's been a long day today, people. I've been up since like 6 a.m running around doing loads of stuff. What is the Cuban guy's name? Obviously not Ortiz, the guy who works with uh, Eddie Reynoso, who beat F.A. Jagba. I can't believe I've forgotten his name. I'm, so <laughs> I'm knackered right now. Oh God, I'm drawing a blank. But you know the guy I'm talking about. Fast hands, fast feet, uh, fake age, as many Cuban fighters have, but athletically gifted. I'd like to see... Deontay Wilder against him. That's a PBC fighter, right? Or if you want to give Deontay a bit of an easier comeback fight, you do have the likes of F.A. Jagba. You do have the likes of um, well, Chris Ariola, but you know, he's already fought Chris, Ar Chris Ariola and stopped him. Uh, who else have they got at PBC? A Jagba, uh, Rice, could fight Rice. Um, I'm trying to think, there's somebody else. That's slipping my mind right now. There's the Cuban guy whose name I can't remember. There's a Jagbar. Oh yeah, Robert Hellenius. That's a name that Deontay Wilder has been linked to a lot, actually, with regards to his comeback. Robert Hellenius. So, and that fight would make sense because Hellenius is a tall guy like Deontay. And Deontay, I guess, wants to get back in the mix. Maybe he wants another shot at Fury. I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine that he would anytime soon, but you never know. Uh, if he ever fights AJ, I guess Robert Hellenius would be good preparation in terms of fighting another big guy. And uh, Frank Sanchez. <laughs> I know you guys were already typing it in the comments. Frank Sanchez is the name of the Cuban guy. I'm so tired at this point. Barely remember my own name. So uh, yeah, there's several people at PBC who Deontay Wilder could face and I'd like to see him back in the ring. I think he's an exciting fighter. As far as him versus Dylan White, I always felt, and I've been saying this for years and I know there are some weirdos out there who claim that I hate Dylan White and all this weird stuff. <laughs> I do not hate Dylan White, have never hated Dylan White. I just practice objectivity on my channel. That's all. And I have always said for years that I think Deontay Wilder would knock Dylan White out, despite the fact that Deontay avoided the Dylan White for year, uh, fight for years. Just because he's a, he avoids the fight doesn't mean he can't beat him. <laughs> you know, I don't think that Deontay was necessarily scared of Dylan White. I think it was his team that kept him away from Dylan White. I think if it was up to Deontay, he probably would have fought White a long time ago. But he was being advised, in my view, to go in a different direction because that's how PBC often are. They're very insular and they don't like to risk their cash cow fighters or you know, their higher earning fighters unless 
it really, really makes sense. Do you know what I mean? And that's what was the case with uh, the Dylan White fight, which never happened you know, between White and Wilder. But if it had happened, I always felt that Wilder would wipe Dylan White out. I just think he, Dylan White's style was all wrong. You know, it's just, uh, or should I say, Deontay Wilder's style is all wrong for Dylan White. I just think, nah. And now that Dylan White's punch resistance seems to have gone completely, I don't want to see the fight, to be honest with you. Unless Dylan White can come back and miraculously show that he can take a shot again, I don't want to see him anywhere near a ring with Deontay Wilder. I think that would end very, very badly for Dylan White. And I don't want to see that, to be honest. From, from the perspective of actually caring about Dylan White's health, I don't want to see it. Uh, Deontay Wilder against AJ, yes. Deontay Wilder against Usyk, for sure. Uh, Deontay Wilder against Hergovic, yes, please, let's have that fight. Deontay Wilder against Michael Hunter, love to see it. Wilder against uh, Bacoli, love it. Joyce, love it. Do you know what I mean? There's so many great fights that Deontay Wilder could be involved in, even against big pharmaceutical Miller. <laughs> I'd like to see Deontay against Miller. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below about Deontay Wilder's comments here with regards to boxing needing an American heavyweight champion. And also whether you'd like to see Deontay come back, and if so, who against? Drop it all in the comment section below.